Hello, so I mentioned prior our Scratch project um, that with our next lesson we're going to embed a little uh, Scratch project within, within our either as an animation, a game, or as a presentation layer to present kind of your ideas a little bit better. I wanted to give us a quick tutorial and then a quick little, to give you a chance to tinker with it and to play with it, but a quick little project to see if you can figure out maybe. I'm going to show you the project and not the blocks and see. That'll give you a chance to kind of tinker with it and then paste your, your work to the forum. Um, the first thing you'll want to do though um, is you'll want to join Scratch. So it's real simple, it's real fast. Username, password, um, there are a few other things I think. But um, So it's a real fast process and then you'll have your account set up. Um, once you have your account to start creating a project, it's very simple. You'll just go here to create, and your entire interface will be right there. Um, so if you want to kind of go through some of the step-by-step -step introductions, there are some right here. If you want to close that, you can click that X, and it'll, it'll close it out. Um, first, I want to show you if I want to get back to the main page. It's search functionality, and it's real simple. Say if I had a project... Um, uh, for the moon, I'll type in the moon, see what comes up. So we're searching here, we're probably getting some some usernames that say the moon, race to the moon, we have a whole lot of games. So you can see there's a whole lot of stuff in here and you might have to get more specific on um, moon lesson maybe to find things on Scratch that you might want to um, embed within some of your, here we go, phases of the moon, some of your work in the future. Now you have a nice little description, it's going to kind of walk you through the, the phases of the moon it looks like. You click my space bar. But if this isn't exactly what you need, one of the cool things is you can go see inside and you see all the blocks that make this moon um, kind of work and all the little sprites and I'll go through that here in a minute. So let's go back here and get back into the create and we'll kind of go through just a few things here. You'll notice here at the bottom those are my sprites. Those are anything that I can animate and make do something. So for example, if I wanted to make this sprite move 10 steps, I could just bring it out in. Every time I click it now it's moving 10 steps. If I wanted it to change colors, have it change colors. See how it's changing colors now. Say I wanted it to play a sound, I won't do that, but I could. Say every 10 steps I wanted it to stamp itself and make a copy. So now it's moving 10 steps, changing color, and then uh, stamping itself. Um, data would be a variable. We won't really get into that yet. Events would be kind of how do I um, start and stop things. So for example, every time I click my space bar now, it's going to do that. And this green flag is kind of how um, I can initiate a whole bunch of processes at once. So when I click the green flag, a whole lot of start uh, things start. Um, control would be um, kind of some of the, uh, oh, the loops and the conditional type statements. You see a lot of the ifs. Let's just say forever to begin with. We want to forever move, change color, and stamp. So now you see him, and he, he hit the edge and he kept on going. So I'm going to say there's another neat little thing that says if on edge bounce. Now he's bouncing. See how he's turning upside down though? If I wanted to change that, I could go here and on this rotation style say only face left and right. And let's also make him. I'm going to click the green flag, turn 15 degrees, so he'll do something a little more interesting. And while I'm at it, let's clear. So when I click the green flag, it'll clear, turn 15 degrees, and then it'll start doing this thing, bouncing around. There we go, so we can kind of see him do, do his little thing there. Um, so control sensing, let's say... Um, if I wanted to make a condition that said if. So 
let's say if um, the mouse is down. So every time the mouse key is pressed, let's have him say ouch for a second. One second, and I'll put that in here. So now you'll see it's going to go through all this stuff, and it's going to not going to do this process until I click. See, I click the mouse, and then he said, "Ouch!" for a second. So that's a little conditional. Um, the operators we really won't get into, but I can um, say I want him to move, maybe move random from one to ten steps every time. Yeah, let's say maybe random one to twenty steps instead of kind of this predictable ten step. Oops. Yeah. Now he's going to kind of randomly move at different speeds as he goes. In fact, let's say 1 to 50 even. Now he's going to move fast and slow, and he's going to kind of adjust his speed as he goes. The more blocks we'll get into later, um, but I want to give us a quick little exercise. You've seen kind of how I did that. Costumes, obviously, if I wanted to do something other than the cat, let's say um, I wanted to do a new sprite. Say I wanted to just do a, a blue. Oops. Blue. Let's uh, fill. The outer shell in red, maybe? The inner shell in green. Okay, now I got a little dot here. So now that I got that, this would be the sounds if I wanted to record or import one. But since we don't, we're not really going to use sounds. We'll go back over here to scripts. Now, you notice this sprite doesn't have any scripts because I haven't made any for it yet. But let's go here and let's just drag all of this into that sprite. So now that sprite has all that set of blocks. And here I want to go ahead and delete this. So I'm going to right click it and delete that sprite. Now when I click it, I should not have the cat, but I'll have this little orb that I created. There we go. So you can kind of see the orb floating around. And now it's saying ouch every time I click. So here is our challenge. I've got this project. And it's a little bit different than what I just showed you, but it uses a lot of the same blocks. So you'll notice, see how it's floating around? It's spinning as it goes, but it's following my mouse. So you're going to have kind of a something to think about there. Um, now it's following my mouse and rotating. It's changing colors. It's something I painted, a sprite I painted. So if you remember, um, here I'm just turning... But now there are some, if you notice in, in this, just to give you a few hints in this sensing, there's a mouse X and a mouse Y, kind of pointing in the right direction. And then there's this motion. So we also have where we can set X, set Y, we can glide to X and glide to Y in our, in our movements. So let's kind of explore this, play around with Scratch. Um, let's see how close you can get after you play around for a while and get familiar with the blocks, how close you can get to creating a project that looks like this and functions like this. So in this project, I have a sprite I created. It's changing colors. You notice it's spinning slowly as it changes colors. And then it's as I move my mouse, it follows my mouse. It goes to where my mouse is, and then it stops until I move my mouse again. So let's recreate that post the link to your project and your new Scratch username um, to the forum that this that this video is on, and let's let's see let's see what we can come up with, and then um, once everyone's done that, we'll we'll dig further into Scratch, and I'll show you a few more things um, regarding how we can uh, take take projects that are already in Scratch, modify them, and use them for our own.